welcome to this meeting of the Midwest people. We'll give a time for people to ask questions uh, by typing in on the chat box so that we don't have a rowdy house. Without further ado, let me call on um, a pastor here to open for us in prayer, uh, Pastor Omorere Joseph. Father Lord in heaven, we want to thank you for this privilege. We want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you because our gathering together is crucial and important, and we need your blessing. We need your guidance. We need your leading. We pray, Lord, for our main speaker today, Dr. Don Pedro Basaki. We pray, Lord, that you give him the wisdom, the understanding to um, speak accurately, to speak with passion, to speak convincingly, to speak with facts, to speak with divine knowledge and understanding. Father, we pray for everybody who is here gathered under these auspices of Midwest movement, that as we rub minds together, you will lead us to the right direction, and we come up with deliberation that will take us to the next step so that everyone all over the world, not just in Nigeria, we know that we are unique people. We do not belong to the Hausas or Fulanis or Ibos or Yorubas. We are Midwest uh, region. So we pray, Father Lord, today that everything that we do will be successful. We ask you all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Pastor Joseph. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for the prayers. I um, want to believe that we have uh, Dr. Baseki Pedro uh, with us now. Please, just to quickly um, do a mini introduction. Um, with me co-hosting this um, grand event tonight, is my senior brother and friend, uh, Chief uh, Theodore Araki. Uh, he's um, co-host with me tonight. And of course, uh, we have our, our guest tonight, uh, Dr. Don Pedro. I'm going to be handing over to Dr. Uh, Chief uh, Theodore to formally introduce him to us. Um, but also, I want to say to each and everyone that is logged on on this call, right, just want to reassure you that you are the uh, most important guest tonight, because without you, this meeting uh, will be meaningless. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join our common cause. We, this is a collective responsibility and cause that we all share. So you're most welcome tonight. Um, let me uh, ask Dr. I mean, um, Chief Theodore to... Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Common. My name is uh, Chief Theodore Areki. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker today, a man who God has uh, given us among millions and billions of people. God gives you one person to do the job. God gave us Christ. God gave us Martin Luther King. I can go ahead and name all the people God has used. Uh, we are lucky to have one amongst us today. His name is Dr. Osaro Pedro Osamudiame Abonifo Ogeno Kuku. Obaseki. Uh, he's popularly known as Don Pedro Obaseki. He's the chief executive of ACC Broadcast Multimedia Limited. They are operators of Wawoof, Wawoo TV, MTN, ACN Mobile TV, Pigeon TV, and Biz FM, and formerly managing director at Da Communication PLC, owners of African Independent Television, AIT, and Ray Power. He established Nigeria's first integrated IPTV service, Wawoo TV, which was named innovative online media company at the National Innovation Awards, July 2015. Dr. Pedro was a governorship aspirant in the 2016 Edo State governorship election. Now, Dr. Pedro, I would like to appeal to you as I continue his introduction. We may be having network issues, so you might go out of coverage. Please, by all means, come back into the coverage. And the other thing I would like to appeal is we cannot all speak. So the questions, critical questions you want to ask, and I know that we are all burning to ask questions. Please, there's a chat field in this um, Zoom meeting. Type your questions there. When you type the questions there, we can then collate the questions and present them to Dr. Basiki, who will now uh, drill down into the questions and provide us with the answers we want as a people. So please, be kind enough to type your questions. Thank you very much. I continue. Dr. Obaseki was educated at both the University of Benin and the University of Ibadan. He did his youth, national youth service in Kaduna. He attended several elementary schools, including Ebenezer Primary School in Benin, 
Ihoma Primary School in Agbo, and Ulia Primary School in Benin City. His secondary education was at Unity School in Agbaro, in uh, Delta State, just near Wari. He holds a bachelor's degree in theater and, meta, uh, and media arts from the University of Benin. He has a master's degree and a doctorate degree in performance theory and praxis. He also has a master's and doctorate degree in business administration. I can go on and on and on and on. And by the way, I will leave a link in the chat, um, in the chat field for any of us who wants to know more about Dr. Baseki. Uh, his, his CV is online, so you can go and peruse, look at him, uh, know about him, know more about him, and uh, we, you can also um, interact with him from that link. So ladies and gentlemen, it is our honor and privilege, we the people of Midwestern region, to present in this meeting, Dr. Pedro Ogeno Chuko Obaseki. Please, let's give him a round of applause. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and um, I'm also happy that um, the journey of, of, of almost 50 something years is culminating in this kind of, of um, very serious meeting. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Theodore Araki. Uh, I want to thank Austin, Pastor Austin, Eleven Austin. And I want to thank all my brothers. I want to thank everybody who's here. I want to thank people of the Midwest People's Movement who have conveyed uh, this uh, conference. I also want to thank all those in the Midwest Movement who have, in the last five years, since uh, July 2016, been fighting for us to put all this together. And uh, I can see members of our entire management committee here and members of the Board of Trustees. Uh, yeah, thank you all. I am a pretty boy, but I am also Mokwaka, but Monyo uh, Rogotu. And uh, I can say clearly that uh, maybe God has a way of doing things. So for my Midwest brothers who are from the Enoani, or the one we commonly call the Nyoma area, I say, Oboshi, Oboshi, no. I talk about Nikin, no, my brothers. And uh, for my security brothers, uh, I also greet all of you. I also see speak more security since I, I grew up in Orion Delhi and Agbaro. I'm happy city boy. And uh, so I'm as much at home in my grandmother's house in Pokori. My mother is from Emeora. My father is Bini, but his mother is Robo. So I'm at home. And so I want to thank everybody. So all our bended guys here, I hear a lot of now. Now, the truth of the matter is I will quickly just make a very passionate presentation. It will not be uh, the man praying at the beginning said, least with facts. I don't want us to stick too much to the history. I want to tell a story. So, and that is uh, the issue. Because if we forget the history, we, may, we are most likely not to forget the story. We are not Igbos. We are not Yorubas. We are not from any part. We are the people, the unique people of the Midwest region of Nigeria. In 1950, let me just start from the beginning so that we get this clear. Nigeria did not start until the old Benin Kingdom fell in February 19, in 1897. Three years later, in the year, in the year 1900, the British now declared a protectorate over southern Nigeria. Prior to that, to that, they asked committees, which were made up of having the colony of Lagos in 1861. We must understand that the Edo and Delta peoples were the last people that were co-opted forcefully into what we call Nigeria today. So experientially, we were at least 30 to 40 years behind in terms of the colonization matrix of Nigeria. As at 1861, clearly 36 years before the fall of Benin, the British already had a governor general and high commissioner in Lagos, which was administered as a separate country after breaking it away from British West Africa that was being governed from Sierra Leone. We must understand that as a unique people, we were attacked by just less than 70 officers who were British, who were white, who were actually predominantly Scottish, who were white, but the rest of their army were made up of Yorubas and Hausas and Igbos. That is a statement of fact. We must understand that we today we still live under those vestiges of colonialism. People don't realize that Ethiopia is not an Urubu name. 
Lord Ichiu is British. Three years after the fall of Benin, Nigeria became more or less organogrammically recognized as the full uh, vassal of the empire of Great Britain and Ireland under Queen Victoria. We must understand that in 1952, precisely, the Edo and Delta peoples who were led then by Oba Akenzwa and a man known as John Ekure Otobo, who is actually from, from Isoko, came together along with Dartin and Semota, along with Jeriton, Chief or Sa Chief Sir Jeriton Marie, to put together a quest for the creation of a region out of the, the three legislated or uh, uh, fiat uh, regions that were created by the British so as to satisfy the new constitution that was put in place. They fought, and it was agreed in 1952 that there should be six regions in Nigeria. That was gazetted in an edit signed by Lord Harcourt. And in that edit, it was agreed that there will be the core region, C-O-R-O, C for Cross River, O for Ogoja, and arrow for rivers. The core region to be carved out of the eastern region, the Bendel or then Edo Delta region, which was to be carved out of the old western region, and the Middle Belt region under the MBC, Middle Belt Congress of Joseph Taka, to be carved out, carved out of the north. This was voted down in the last meetings in 1959 at Lancaster House. And as a result, it was agreed that upon independence, all the five areas of the old Nigeria or the old British Cameroons will be allowed to decide whether or not to continue to be in Nigeria or how they want to continue to be in Nigeria. So early part of 1960, the northern part of, um, of um, the southern part of, the, of Cameroons insisted on a referendum and they got that in the early part of 1961. And the southern part of Cameroon, Aram Bakasi, joined Cameroon. Why the northern part, that is why they were saying that Atiku is not Nigerian or was not born in Nigeria. The areas of Mubi Plateau, the areas around the Adamawa Highlands, we are now part, we are now taking excised from Cameroon and put in Nigeria. In 19, just exactly 18 months after Nigeria became independent, after four, four starts, actually, the first um, uh, successful motion for the creation of the Midwest was moved first in the Western House in Ibadan and later voted in July 19, uh, 1963. And on 13th of July 1963, the Midwest referendum was held. It must be understood that our fathers, our forefathers, knew exactly what they wanted. If not, the people of Enwani, the people of Opanam, the people of uh, Obio, the people of Iselu, Iselazaka, and that areas will not call to their Nyocha or Oshimili, would have chosen to be part of Eastern Nigeria. They did not. Because of their cultural affinity, because of the fact that you cannot forget history in the creation of any federating or uh, 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 coagulating units, they decided to go with their brothers in Ugeli, in Ika Kramer, in Uweru with their brothers in, in Otowodo, with their brothers in Benin, with their brothers all over. We must understand that the Midwest, though we may be fractionized, though we may seem to speak languages that are different, we all have the root in one place. That is why if you are a, ling if you are a, ling if you are a, ling a linguistic student, you will, or you can even Google it. All the languages in our area are first generation Edo languages. If you sit back and listen, when the Benin man is talking, he is speaking Urobo. So for me, I don't, sometimes I make a mistake by forgetting I'm Benin and I speak Urobo, I'm Urobo, I speak Benin. We must understand that in our nativity, none of us, after more than 60 years of being a, an independent nation, after more than 111 years of being in this country, or 121 years of being in a place called Nigeria, unquote, we still don't see ourselves as Nigerian. There is none in our languages that says, um, which tribe you be? And you will reply, I be Nigerian. So, so, I am an Urubu citizen. And these things are important while we chart a new course. In 1963, Nigeria was based on a, on a quadruple, um, uh, I will call it tripod, quadpod four co-equal regions federating into Nigeria. And that was our true constitution. 
that declared Nigeria a republic. We must understand that in that four region, we had nothing less, we had nothing less than one over four of the voices in Nigeria. After that, since 1963, the only time Nigeria ever, as Nigerians, performed the internationally recognized um, uh, mode of creating federating units, nations or nation states. We went for a plebiscite, a referendum, where 89.01% of the people is unprecedented, decided to leave and recognize themselves as one. We had our own flag, we had our own coat of arms, and the Midwest had its own constitution, which by God's grace we have a, a copy of. This must be understood. We must understand that today, Edo and Delta, we are the most marginalized areas of Ni peoples of Nigeria. The 12 tribes of the Midwest, it's not by accident that God made us 12, just like the 12 tribes of Israel. 12, five in Edo, seven in, 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 in Delta. The 12 tribes of the Midwest are the only people, we are the only people that can, as are today, approach the United Nations to say we want self-determination. That by the, when we started the Midwest movement, that was not our goal. Now let's come back. In 1963, it also must be understood because every federation is more or less a fiscal, F-I-S-C-A-L, is a fiscal affair where the resources of the, of the engaging or uh, 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 federating units is left at the behest of those who are federating. But Nigeria operates via reverse osmosis. We are the only federation on planet Earth where it is top down rather than bottom up. If you are in California, you do not contribute more than the statutory required amount to the federal post. You do not go to Washington, D.C. at the last day of every month to do a federal allocation. Nigeria is the only country where the federal government allocates where what it does not generate. As of 1963, Nigeria was based on a revenue sharing formula of 50, 30, 20. 50% is kept by the federating unit that originates whatever it is. 30% is put in what they call the federation account. And then 20% is given to the federal government. That 30% that is kept in the federation account is now shared again amongst all the federating units according to, to demography, geography, and spread. That is exactly what used to happen until 1963, until 1966, January 15th, when the military boys came into power, and via the declaration or the decree of uh, John Johnson Monaco Aguyi Ronsi, Nigeria ceased to be a federation. Today we are still a federation only on paper, only. And so now, in let we can fast forward. In 1979, Professor Ambrose Ali, the governor then of the of the of the of the Midwest, now called Bendel, took the federal government of Nigeria to court over the revenues that was being shared so as to return to what was agreed by all the federating units in 1963. He won that court case. Unfortunately, four months after the winning of that court case, that government or that regime, he won in August. He lost in October 1st, 1983. And uh, former general, now Dr. Samuel Osaibo of Bermuda, became the MPN governor. And by December 31st of same year, less than three months later, he was removed or they were removed from office via the military coup of, of, a, of a major general, uh, Muhammad Ubuari. Now, it must be clear why I'm giving all these backgrounds is for us to understand that we are at the vortex of history. In 1967, May to be precise, the Biafra, the eastern region of Nigeria, declared a secession from Nigeria, which they called Biafra. Now, in August of same year, it took them 24 hours only to ram from the bridgehead in Asaba and got to Benin. On getting to somewhere close to on getting to somewhere close to Abo, at that by, at that cut off from, from Umunede, the one turned and went towards one side went towards Ugeli. They actually camped in my secondary school, in Unity School at Agbaro, while the other one took off from the side of Iseluku, went through a uh, uh, and got to Auchi. And the rest came to Benin. And we know what happened. We will say that our governor then. Uh, then uh, Colonel David Akodejo had to run out of Benin on a bicycle. Now, we must understand that we are the most marginalized sector of this country. As of 1967, Nigeria had four divisions of the Nigerian army. The one div, two div, 
3 d and it's 2 d on that, on, on that note, the Midwest was left defenseless. We had no defense. Meanwhile, Enugu had a division. Ibadan had 2 d second division. The, the garrison was in Lagos, which was almost like a division. Why the, the just had a division? And then the one div or number one division was in Kaduna. And so because of the defenseless state of the Midwest, they ran us, they overran us in 24 hours. Now, as at that time, we were more or less like the cannon folder in that conf con conflagration that took place in 1967. Outside of the eastern region of Nigeria, which is made up of rivers, which is made up of the five states of, of uh, the southeast today, and the other four states of the south-south, rivers, by, uh, by, uh, almost all of Bayelsa, because the Sagbama area of Bayelsa was in the Midwest. The areas below Patani were in the Midwest. And some parts of River State, the Undoni part of River State of today, we are in the Midwest. That is why today, in Bayelsa State, the Deputy Governor of Bayelsa is an Isokoma, Senator Erujakbo. Uh, 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 is the gov Deputy Governor of Bayelsa State. Today, the Midwest again, is at the very epicenter of this fight in case Nigeria divides. We are faced with either a road to Yugoslavia or we are faced with the road to Mogadishu, that is Somalia, except there is a concrete schematic to pull together the peoples of the Midwest and see them as one, and we must negotiate as one over four. If what our position in the Midwest movement has always been, is that in case Nigeria ceases to be the way it is, we want to be left alone. Because our 10 to 11 million people will still make us more than, larger in terms of population, than at least 75% of all the states in West Africa. We will be bigger than Togo, we will be bigger than Benin, we will be bigger than Sierra Leone, Liberia, we will be bigger than, than Gambia, we will be bigger than Cape Verde, we will be bigger than, uh, than Guinea-Bissau. That is how... Uh, we must see ourselves. Now, in, 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 in 2017, that was when the IPOB stuff started. Mr. Namdi Kanu raised a, a very public, widely publicized statement stating that the Biafra boundary ended at the o o Oriomo River, or the Osiomo River, just five kilometers away from, from Abudu. The whole of present Delta Ibo, the whole of Ika, the whole of Isoko, the whole of Ukwani, the whole of Ugeli were put in, the, in, in their map. Why the Odua people took everything sent to that same river? The whole of Bini, the whole of Ishakiri were put under Odudua. That is not a lie. It is a fallacy from the pit of hell. It must be understood that the first Ishakiri or Olu of Ishakiri or Olu of Warriors, as we so know him today, is no other than Ginua the first son of Obaolua of Benin. People must understand that in the history of the Shakiri nation, the first six kings of the Shakiri land were all Benin's, or Zolua, Esigi, to the extent that in 1978, or March, precisely March 1979, the Oba of Benin, Jawa, took the title of the Olu of the Shakiri. Olu of the Shakiri was, was Olu Erejua II, while our own was Oba Erejawa the I. Same name, same meaning. We are one people. In my meeting with the Oroji of Ope, His Royal Highness, His Royal Majesty, General Mujakbero, he made it clear that as he sits here on his throne, he is sitting on a throne of the Edo people. And we must continue to understand that our brothers, wherever we are, whether we are Igbos, or, uh, speaking Igbo, or we are speaking Robo, or we are speaking uh, Akoko Edo, or we are speaking Ola, we have a commonality that cannot be wished away by the emerging new um, uh, uh, geography that has been drawn in Nigeria. We must understand that in as much as it is safe, we are more Midwest than we are South-South. In the South-South, if we decide to go that route, we will be a new set of minorities in a new nation, when by God's design, we were meant to be a nation state by ourselves. It must be understood, I know I'm using all these as premises, that Nigeria has 16 natural ports. 16. 11 of those 16 natural ports are in the Midwest. Eight of those 16 natural ports are in Delta State alone, whether it's at Escravos, at Non River, at Focados, at Coco, 
at Saple, we are a unique people that God has engineered brilliantly. Today, our people are crying because we get 13% derivation of the federal of the revenues from our place. Why the federal government takes away 87 of what is left. So you can see the arithmetic that if by tomorrow anything happens, the Edo and Delta peoples will still remain the uh, the bride, whether they are going to marry us or they will rape us. But it is left for us to show that we are a unique people. We have gotten to the point where we now have to start thinking of what they call ASD, Action for Self-Determination, in case we are faced with a Yugoslavia situation. Today, I have, I just want to dis dispel this. I might, I am not the leader of the Midwest movement per se. I am just a face, a front, a voice to articulate the position of the Midwest. The Midwest movement today, we fought the federal government for almost three years before they agreed, after visits by arrest by TSS and all those work, before they agreed to register us as the Edo and Delta and Indigenous Peoples Welfare Association, which we operate on legally. And then we go by the sobriquet Midwest movement. Now, today, we must know that the Fulani headsmen have taken over almost half of our space. They are fighting people in Nueru. In Nueru, in Ugeli, the entire stretch between Owa and Abajo on the way from Abo to Abraka has been taken over by Ruga. You may not know this. In 2019, I had a meeting with the OBs of Ikaland, led by OB Efezomo, the OB of Owa, where we went to a place in the middle of Abajo on that empty stretch between Ababo, Uronibe, uh, Uronibe, Umutu, Ubiaruko, and um, Abraka, they took, listen carefully, 30,000, I repeat, 30,000 30, hectares where they had seeded that to, they took it during the time of Babangida. When Babangida started his DIFRI, the Directory for Food, Roads, and Rural Infrastructure, it was now handed over to the Bini Owina River Basin Development Authority who now decided to build small, small igloo-looking things that are only occupied by Hausa Fulanis today. If you come to Bini today, as I speak today, the Oba Palace, which is less than 600 or 700 meters away from uh, Lagos Street, is under threat because everybody you will see there are all Hausa Fulanis. They've taken over our bushes. They have killed women in Irwa and Uromi. They have killed women in the backyards of Ethiopia, in Isiokolo, in Agbon clan. They have raped our children, killed our people in even Okada here. They've taken over our space. There must be a collective effort by the Midwest peoples to address this. Now, what has the Midwest movement done in the interim since this started? On August 9, 2017, to celebrate the, that was the, 15, the 54th anniversary, of the creation of the Midwest movement, of the Midwest region, the Midwest movement made a declaration which was sent to the federal government to make it clear to them that we want Nigeria to be fundamentally restructured along non-federal paradigms, or else they should leave us alone. In December, two years ago, we had the Midwest summit in Asaba, well attended, and I thank the OVA of Olomu, and uh, we thank the OVA of um, Uvie, who physically attended. We thank all of them so that we will begin to draft a new vista for Nigeria. We created a platform, one for professors, the Midwest professors uh, 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 platform, so as to begin to create a think tank to find a way out of this uh, 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 problem we are in. It is facing us, it is right there, staring us in the face. We also went to a little extent by creating the Midwest Liberation Movement. This was created, this was inaugurated in 2018 by whether we like it or not, any man who wants peace must be prepared for war. So on that, I will thank my friends, other than Patrick Ipirima and co. I will thank them. I will thank uh, 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 the likes of uh, the Chief Ifada. And I will thank, ultimately, don't be offended for those of us who are too academic, I will thank government, the man we all know as Tom Polo, for throwing his weight behind such a uh, uh, movement. So we are beginning to get ready in case they want to use us again or sandwich us or divide us without our consent. Finally, to governize the Midwest governors of Edo and Delta, in 2019, a committee was set up 
which had all the retired generals. And we came up with the Midwest Security Network, which was to be called the Midwest Shield. It is a 21-page document that, from, that had an end-to-end -end schematic of what it would take to defend the people of the Midwestern region of Nigeria. We also, in, in line with what has been done in Western Nigeria, we created the Midwest Developmental Agenda. And that Midwest Developmental Agenda put together a full document that was submitted to Governor Godwin Obaseki and, God, and Governor Atoifai Okowa for the creation of a Midwest Development Commission that will begin to address the shortfalls in the developmental uh, 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 scheme for Edo and Delta peoples. We know right now, as I so speak with you, we have devolved into several committees, a constitutional drafting committee, an economic empowerment, an economic empowerment and financial committee, a contract and mobilization committee, and all other committees, so as to begin to put in place, just in case, because Nigeria right now is a nation ruderless. We have also, as an urgent imperative, listen to, encourage people to be able to, in case anything happens, we are a unique people that are struggling the Nigerian, we are the very epicenter of the Nigerian nation. You cannot traverse from the north to the south of, of, of this country, from the east to the west, without passing a territory of the Midwest. You cannot go from Lagos to Abuja without going through Lampese and Ibilo. You cannot trade in this space without people of the Midwest. But uh, because of our nature, because of our, um, how will I put it, our accommodation, Today, we are almost like dispersed seeds, seeds flung and scattered all over the world. It must be also understood that today, the Midwestern peoples of Nigeria, whether you are Isoko, whether you are Okwani, whether you are Edo, Edo, you are Lobo, or you are Shekiri, we are the largest single block of the diaspora, of the Nigerian diaspora. You must understand that just last year, it, is, it was agreed, it was calculated that you contributed, to the diaspora contributed 6.1% to the total uh, 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 earnings of the Nigerian nation because you remitted $26.3 billion to this country. And we are the only people where Western Union works in Benin on a Saturday. So I want to beg all of us that we must throw away our strands of discord. We must forget our little ethnic bickers. We must forget who is Urobo and who is Ope. We must forget who is Ishekiri or who is Bini. We must forget who is Enoani, uh, who is Aniocha or Shemini. We must forget who is Ika, because we all, as we so speak, we hold the lion's tail. And unless we are careful, we will be consumed by that ravaging Fulani lion. And it is important that we understand that as they once tried to conquer us to create Nigeria, if Nigeria is going to divide, if we don't unite, if we don't move from being broomsticks to a broom, to a bunch, we will be snapped individually, we will be snapped collectively. It is important that we understand that wherever we are in the world, no matter how much Austin we try, no matter how Theodore uh, Olorogun Ted we try, no matter how Henry Ebikwelu we try, no matter how Dominic Eriata we try, no matter how all of us independently or individually we try, we will not be British enough, but we will always be Bendel enough. I thank you guys, and I thank everybody. Oh, Bendel. Thank you so I'm much, uh, Dr. Pedro. I didn't, want to exceed, I didn't want to exceed the time. You, you no, but it, this, is, this is fantastic. I think that um, you've done very well to have you know, told us you know, the historical background. Or you've told us the story from where we're coming from, where we are. And um, I think from the question, some of the questions that I've seen so far, uh, people are already asking, so what next? Where are we going? Where should we be going with all of this? So I'm going to give a few minutes to people. I want to appeal again that uh, because of the nature of, of, um, of, of this Zoom meeting, we might not be able to ask people to unmute themselves and ask questions individually. So I want to appeal that you type your questions, and then we can just go through them, and then uh, I'm sure that Dr. Masik will be able to um, give us uh, some answers to some of these uh, to, to the questions that we had. Um, someone asked a question here. It says that how can we bring young people to this movement? Is there a website, social media uh, uh, platforms, United Nations articles, and all of that? I don't know if Dr. Pedro wants to throw some light to that. What we've done in the Midwest movement was to create a youth, a youth wing. We created a youth wing in 2018. In fact, we also 
decided to go on a university to university. Maybe later I'll post some of those videos. A university to university uh, um, uh, engagement uh, uh, exercise. We found out that because of the fact that history is no longer taught in our schools, children who were born or who became who grew up after 1991, when Edo and Delta was were, were split, do not even understand that there once was a Bendel. They don't even know. So we started with the University of Benin and with the likes of the professor of history, uh, Ben Sinosadolo, and the professor of law, professor of constitutional law. We went there, we spoke to them. We also did the same in Abraka. But the sad thing in Abraka was that we were more or less thrown out of the place <laughs> by lecturers <laughs> of, of uh, Delta State University Abraka. So it, this has been a conundrum that we face. How to engage the uh, invest in everything yes, with it. Exactly. So that is one of the things that I think we will need support for. Now, where is the diaspora important? In our board of trustee meeting about two weeks ago, um, it was another problem that we had to, 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 to encounter. So as an immediate address to this, the Midwest Board of Trustees set up, a, which is just being populated now, a big office that can take about 100 people, at the very center, just about two uh, temples away from New Guinea Market, where the Midwest movement will have its headquarters. Also, about a year or so ago, we only had funding challenges. We also launched Radio Bendel, an online service. Also, about a couple of months earlier, some of our members who are in the United Kingdom, we also have the Midwest movement UK, the likes of um, uh, uh, Joe, uh, uh, Omar Odio and Co. We all had a deliberate way for us to begin to engage the diaspora because the diaspora would be the shortest cut for us to solve many of these problems. If we can get the diaspora, because you own the, 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 how will I put it? the financial muscle and you are the leaders of thought in your, in, your, in your localities back home and you are the ones who feed people, if you are able to take this down that value chain, we will be able to get more traction as much as possible and as fast as humanly permissible. We have challenges. That is the truth. But these challenges will be, can be surmounted if there is a collective will to do this. Um, the younger ones are pivotal. They are too important in this paradigm. Apart from the creation of the Midwest Liberation Movement in Wari, which has, of course, not people like me who are in their 50s, Many of them are young ones. A few were ex-militants, but all of them luckily are educated. We were able to at least have an interface with those who are at that level. And we think that if there is a conscious effort by all of us, whether we are in uh, uh, Oturubo, whether we are Urubo Progress Union, whether we are Oseredo, whether whatever we are, if we begin to spread down this narrative, we might just be able to, within the nearest future, as much and as fast as possible, begin to change this narrative or, at, no, the best, seize this narrative. I want to also quickly say that the diaspora is so important that the Midwest movement decided in late 2019, what stopped that momentum was the, in the very next year, uh, by March 2020, the COVID-19 thing set in. As of August and September 2019, we had gone from the, U from the UK to the US to try as much as possible to educate and engage the diaspora in changing this, this, this narrative. I was in the, US to, in the U.S. and the U.K. In fact, I can even see, I just, I just saw now that, uh, uh, Dr. Arendt, who organized for us to meet with some uh, congressmen in the, United, in, the, in the United States to begin to tell them that this is the people of the Midwest and we are the most maligned people of the Nigerian nation, who used to be one over four, but today we are two over 36 or one over 18. And the economic and political import of that share geo geopolitical arithmetic is telling on all of us today. And I think that if we find a way, maybe as part of the community that's arising from, there are too many, talk, uh, too many people accuse us of too many talk, but if we don't talk and plan, we will actually be planning to fail. Thank Our you very much, see. Dr. Baseki. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, I, I think in all of this, we can, the, the younger generation are very uh, computer savvy, so they have smartphones and all that, so they can, so I think 
although word of mouth is still the biggest marketing tool, but social network media is 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 grabbing people so much, especially the younger ones. So I think you should also you, you should you should also uh, consider um, creating such uh, platforms, such groups, you know, where the younger ones can uh, interact with this with this course. The next question I have is um, is for my wife because she is also logged on, and she's asking. Uh, are we able to ask for self-determination or independence from the United Nations? Because she listened to you and heard you say something in that direction. Are we able to do that? Yeah, um, quickly, sir, let me just say this quickly. Um, when this all started, it didn't start as a self-determination movement, as its primary aim. It was for Nigeria to be fundamentally restructured, for Nigeria to be torn down, to be dismantled to be deconstructed and reconstructed along non-federal paradigms. But as things wore down, it became clear that singing that narrative was like, a, was like singing a knock Dimitri's colloquy. It was as if we were just um, uh, preaching to the deaf. Now, in the United Nations, in the, in the United Nations document, for you to be able, one of the major things, for you to ask for self-determination or recognition of sin, there must be a referendum. And in Nigeria, not any space within this country had ever had a referendum except the Midwest. And the major thing that this has given is that the Midwest, as it so stands now, on paper, is the only part of Nigeria that can say there is a, a document where outside of the said sign-offs that was organized by the British, between 1857, when they forced the then uh, Oba of Lagos, uh, uh, Dosumu, to sign off Lagos in perpetuity for eternity, that's what that document says. And all the other uh, treaties, unquote, that were done, it is only in the Midwest such a treaty was never signed. The Oba of Benin, the Nana of Ishekiri, did not sign. And as a result, Nana of Ishekiri was was exiled to Sierra Leone, to Liberia, to Brazil, until he died. And the Oba of Benin faced what they now call the Benin Massacre, or which in recent sense was the invasion of Benin by, 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 Lord B, by Sir Beecroft. And after that, in 18, 1963, these same people who never signed their away their patrimony Decided to partake in. I think Dr. Pedro has. Uh, Pedro's frozen. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, it automatically exactly. becomes null, it becomes void, and of no effect. Nigeria will, will be facing what they call in law a force, a force majority. And I want to quickly state that in December 16 last year, we participated in the Nina's declaration that Nigeria actually has ceased to exist as it were. And as a result of that, we can ask the United Nations for self-determination. However, there is a caveat. If push comes to shove, are the Midwest peoples of Akoko, Edo, Esako, uh, Ora, uh, Bini, Urubo, Ope, Ishekiri, Isoko, uh, Enuani, Ika, Okwani, and Western Izon, do we have the coagulating wherewithal to be able to we stand any invasion, if I use that word on court. The answer is no. Now, which means that the building blocks must now be set. About a month plus ago, I had a, a similar event with um, many of our brothers that was organized by uh, Dr. Or, uh, Charles Omarodion, where we also went through the same conundrum. It is our ability to design a schematic to take us out and protect us, that is important. So the Midwest Movement Board of Trustees in 20, February 2020 approved a document. We are not sharing it publicly so that some of us will not be arrested when it is not necessary. But that document can be placed to all Midwestern peoples. We need to know because information is key. And where information is lacking, we will be faced with misinformation and disinformation. And that is the Midwest Developmental Agenda and the Midwest Security Network that will make us ready if, in case push comes to shove and Nigeria becomes a Somalia or Yugoslavia, we will be able to defend our people 
and protect our collective patrimony. We cannot do it as robots. The Ethiopian, Ugeli, Uvie, and those few local government areas cannot stand alone. The people of Edo South, the Benin people, cannot stand alone. Like Robo say, Bobona, Bobona, when this hand, watch this hand, now the hand will clean. The Shekiri nation cannot stand alone. Isokos cannot stand alone. But as together, we can stand together and be stronger. And we must not be scared that one minority within this minority, this coagulation of minorities, will be swallowed. The reason is, our history does not show that. In 1963, a minority from Asaba, because at that time, the Enoani people had only two, they just had a division, Asaba division. We used to have 14 divisions, and there were just one over 14. Was meant to produce the origin, the first premium. The Urobos and the Beninese, who were the majority, were told to play a back role and to assuage the Urobos. They gave them Sir Jerry Tomareri as the ceremonial governor. The deputy premier was from Isoko, John Ekbre Otobu. Today, the Isokos make less than 6.5% of Delta. The, the Isokos are a part of one senatorial district, Delta South, which is made up of three ethnic, ethnic nationalities. In 1979, that is the only two times elections were fairly held in the Midwest region. This same sheer political, brilliant political engineering that actually accentuated the voice of the minorities was replayed by having them as Akbaria from Uruguay as deputy governor. While the governor was following Shaw Ambuzali, who is from who is an ESA man, today ESA is 16.5% of Edo. So in the larger Bendel, ESA was less than 8%, but they produced the governor. And the speaker was a minority within a minority. Today, the, the Ora people have only two local government areas out of 18 in those states. But they produced the speaker. And the two small local government areas in Isoko produced the deputy speaker, Dr. Spana Okbozo. So God has already arranged it that we, we know we, it is of late that they play up our ethnicities so as to begin to divide us so that without divide, they can rule us. As I stay here, I don't actually remember that I'm Bini or Robo because my best friends may not be Benin. Yes. They are robots. I grew up in Afis area. I grew up in Okoro I grew up in Agbaro, in Oviri and Oro. I know Remo Kokwan, I know them, I speak it. So there is a, 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 a need for all of us to see that if tomorrow they blow the clarion call, the Midwestern peoples of Edo and Delta have in, on the strength of documentation a bigger, better, a case than any other part of the Nigerian Federation. Moreover, what we did in the Midwest movement about a month ago was to apply to the unrepresented uh, nations people's organization, and we are awaiting their approval. The Europe that they have been approved, and the Igbos have also done that. The Midwest, the day we applied was also the day that the, that the Middle Belt people also applied. It must be clear that the Middle Belt of Nigeria is more thrown apart than any other part of this country. Um, I'm reading so much from the um, questions that people are typing in and the, the request for people to speak. Um, I think we would, we, would, we would allow that, but please, I want to just appeal to us so that we can make it very brief uh, because of time. Um, so if you do have a question, you can just lift up your, uh, raise your hand on the thing and then we would allow you uh, maybe a minute or two to just get straight to the point and ask your questions. Now, the next question we have for you here is um, uh, from a user called Godwin Ogenede, and he's wondering in all of this, what is the way forward? I will be very, very sorry. My video is, I don't want to, I don't want to lose access. So my video is yeah, that's fine. internet. That's fine. Yeah. I think the immediate way forward is to form this one. I'm talking as myself now, I'm not talking now on behalf of the Midwest movement because. Um, we've not discussed it to this extent. But as things are panning and running fast, I think there is a need for us to create a high council, the Midwest High Council. This must be discreetly done, and this should be effectively supported by the leaders of thought of all our, our ethnic nationalities. That is my first. Number two is for us here to all adopt, if we get it, the, as designed by the Midwest movement, the Midwest developmental agenda. We just use that developmental agenda as a, a, a title, but it clearly states where we are, 
state what we have to do, and also point the way forward. In case, there are two scenarios here. Number one, the, the three, the first scenario is the status quo as it is, and that nobody within the Nigerian Federation is ready to continue with this status quo. It must be dismantled. Number two is if the Nigerian government, the, to use the words of Professor Gigi Dara in our meeting in Pandev, if the imperialist in Abuja, that is, the, the, that is what he called imperialist in Abuja, we permit for Nigeria to be fundamentally restructured, what are the things that the Midwest peoples of Edo and Delta will demand in the new Nigeria? And number four, in case the center can no longer hold and things fall apart, how do we get ourselves to recognize ourselves and then get the world to recognize us as a bona fide people who have the right for self-determination? Those are the three. Every other thing to a large extent will be an adjunct, a branch, an amalgam of these or all of these. That is the situation. I think he's making a very valid point. We'll take that first. Yeah, he's back. I think he's back. Dr. Bello, okay. Could yes. you repeat what you just said there? We, we lost um, a chunk of what you were saying. Oh, well, okay. I started by saying that what I wanted to say isn't a position yet of the Midwest movement because neither the General House nor the Board of Trustees had discussed it. But as, we, as things are spiraling, I will advocate the creation of a Midwest High Council that we have proper representation of every ethnic nationality within the Midwest space. Number two is for all of us, though for now it is a confidential document, to have the Midwest Developmental Agenda document with the Midwest Security Network document, which was approved by the Board of Trustees of the Midwest Movement, for all of us to run with it. And with that, it shows where we are, where we hope to be. Also, it addresses that there are three major issues on ground. Number one, the status quo as it is today. In Nigeria, where one over four member is now one over 18, the Midwest peoples, the most maligned people. Number two, that in case Nigeria restructures, what do we as the Edo and Delta people demand from that Nigeria. And number three, in case the center of Nigeria no longer holds and things begin to fall apart, what will be the position of the Midwest peoples? And that is clear. A people that must be allowed or a people that must seize their destinies in their own hands to be a nation state as they were once upon a time before the marauding influence and invasions of our British colonial masters. That is what I said earlier. And that is the way forward. Or that is my belief should be the way forward. Because if we don't do that, we will not be able to raise the bar and move this whole narrative a notch higher and put ourselves on a, a bigger, better pedestal so that we can obviously, openly fight for the people of Edo and Delta or else we will be at the behest of, of our near and far neighbors, whether Fulani, whether Udua, or whether Yafra. Now, there's uh, another question, uh, and that's about, uh, let me use, you know, marketing. How do we create an awareness amongst all our people without discounting anyone? You know, the youths, the uneducated, the educated, the elites, the high class, You've spoken so much about, uh, you know, the, the board of trustees and all the big, big men. What about the market woman in Oba Market? Hello? The market woman in... Okay. Hello? Um, can you hear me, doctor? Yes, I, yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so um, what I was saying, I don't know if you heard me, yes. all I was saying. I was saying, how do we disseminate this, this movement, this course to everyone, you know, irrespective of where they are on, on the scheme of things, uneducated, the, if you want to call them illiterate, we don't mind. We will educate all of them. Bender State is, is known for education. So how do we disseminate? How do we get this message, you know, to everyone? You know, uh, the, uh, you, know you, you mentioned the top people, Board of Trustees, 
the high, the elites, but we need the, the, those at the bottom of the, of the, okay, of the ladder. Me. How do we get information to them? Okay, um, quickly, I will, I will be a little emotional because um, um, it, it is the power of the passion that might be able to drive us. Like I said earlier, we have enlisted and set up a Midwest liberation movement with Chief Victor Ifada as a general, unquote, and with Patrick Kipirima as the general secretary. And we had enlisted, we've gone to the creeks. This is, this is uh, what I shouldn't be saying here, but I think the, the push has come to, has, has come to show. To show, yes. yeah. Now, why I keep mentioning Board of Trustees is because a few people think that maybe it's just Pedro when you're the top, you're the top, you're the top. If you scroll through this, uh, we are 81 here now. I can yes. see members of the Midwest movement. I can see Dr. Bright Arex. I can see uh, Dr. Loretta Oboroko, who is a member of our board of trustees. I can see Dr. Eaza. I can see Ambassador Joey, who, who leads the Midwest UK. I can see doc, Dr. Morodio. I can see a lot of us. I can see um, uh, Frank, Frank Tiete, who is a member of our Constitution Drafting Committee. I can see a lot of us here. The thing that needs to be done in this regard is for all of us to stop posting IPUB. One of us. Every time I go online, Midwest peoples, we are the big, at, at least when we were doing the do LA. I think we've lost Dr. Obaseki again. Uh, he switched to video, and I think that's where we lost him. He, doesn't, he probably doesn't have the bandwidth to take the video call. Uh, we'll just give him a few seconds and see if he can come back. Okay. I would also suggest that um, uh, once he answers that question, we'll begin to... I see many hands are yes, yes, raised. Yes, if you have answers, so, we can take answers. Yes, I, would, yes I, I, I can see so many hands. So um, once that question has been answered, I would start with... Um, I don't know who this call is, but UPU Worldwide. Um, so if you can just prepare... Not now. When, when Dr. Obaseki finishes, yeah, once he joins us and he, he gives us uh, the, ans the, the answers the question... We will take um, your questions, sir, if you don't, if you don't mind. So just get uh, the internet is. I think I hope, I hope these uh, DSS people are not trying to shut me down. No, no, no. Don't worry. They, nobody will shut you down. Uh, shut I said down. we are the most active persons on social media, but we are only concerned about stories about other people. We, we post stuff about iPod. We post stuff about we post cat catast catastrophes in Olu, but we will not post catastrophes in Owen. We are like a people, we, I, I hope, I'm not trying to be, I, I want to beg, don't be offended. We are in self-denial because we seem to be more concerned about mundane expectations from our house of rep. They are not important in this thematic, I'm sorry to say. I agree. We are more, we are more concerned about what, what a co we feel. So Pedro, I shouldn't be talking because I'm scared of what God will we think. No, no, I would rather sacrifice my partiness, my APCness, and my PDPness to raise the banner of my deltaness, of my doness, of my tenderness. I think that if all of us, as we are here now, we are 80-something, I have community online. Even if we all contribute just eight, uh, to 2,000, 5,000 of our community to post about the same thing about Edo and Delta on the same day on our Twitter handles and our Facebook pages, it will by default go viral. We are key. Number two, I mentioned that we created the Radio Bendel as an online radio service, which we hope we'll be able to push from any part of the world. It is an app that sits right now on, on, uh, on Google Play Store. We took down the one on Apple, uh, uh, Apple, Apple. Uh, app, uh, on app Store mm. because we have to be paying and we're populating it with content. But the time is nigh for us to do exactly that. We are the only people, whether we are Edo, Robo, or Isan, we are the ones that we speak Yoruba, and yet we won't allow our children to speak Bini because it is nativity. Unless there is a personal evolution of the average Bendel man, this revolution will not take place. Yes, thank you, Doctor. We, doctor, I think what you are saying yes. is this, and this is why we are here today. Most yes. Midwesterners are searching for their soul even though we have the soul, we know that we have the soul, but somewhere they can't find it. So they are searching for it. Some of us see it in the Yorubas. Some of us see it in the Igbos. Some of us see it elsewhere. Whereas we have the soul. And this is what we are about here today. Yeah? Yes, so, Dr. Uh, uh, Pastor Common is going to 
uh, ask people who want to ask questions, to ask you the questions rather than typing it. Thank you, uh, Chief uh, Theodore. Um, I did uh, request that uh, the brother with the UPU name um, should ask his question because I see his hand raised there. So please, over to you. Just unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Um, my name is uh, Prince Noble Otadafiro. I'm from uh, Jesse Kingdom. My father was the late king of uh, Jerry Kingdom. Uh, I reside in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. And I'm very much uh, into uh, the Urobo. That's why you see uh, UPU there. I really want to know what the stance of the Urobos is in this and who, who uh, is being uh, communicated, you know, and also, uh, if the UPU is very much aware of uh, uh, this movement. Honorable Kobiro, I truly believe that it is important for the robots, particularly the UPU, as the oldest robot uh, 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 progress union, to be on this. About two years ago, um, I will just be frank with you, we made direct entities to the then president general of the Robo Progress Union. And then we do that, you are talking to the wrong person. You are talking to this one who you think caused so much, so much schematic. I now had to go to Papa and we went to the house, the house of, of the office of Senator uh, uh, David Dafinone for us to know who should we talk to, who do we need to speak to at this juncture. But as we are at the Midwest, we went the largest single um, ethnic representation is actually also the robots. Whether it is Rear Admiral Eluma, whether it is Professor Hope Iraga, who is the chairman of everything, who is the chairman of our rapporteuring committee in terms of what we turn out, all the documents you see. And we, we truly believe that unless we are able to, then we have also gone to meet traditional rulers. We have the likes of more Olobutere, uh, there was a problem over whether we should be talking to Pa Tuesday uh, away. I'm sure you know him, sir. You know, so, but we were able to get at least six or seven of the Ulobo kings to sign on this. And I know that if we continue this way to begin to decimate or, or divide Ulobo, it will not work. I want to appeal to my Ulobo brothers that there is a need for us as one to jump in on this and run with it. Because at the end of the day, it may interest the robots to know that in, I would, I would maybe what, when we finish it, there's a way there's an email of us have for me to post the result of the Midwest referendum. In the Midwest, the only area that had 93% vote was both Eastern and Western Robo. Eastern Robo is the place we now, is really, really not really south. And then the eastern, western Urubu was the areas of, of Urube, uh, Saple, Jesse, and, 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 and Co, uh, up to Uara. So please, we do not, we, I will not say right now that the Urubu Progress Union is on board, but I will say elements and members of the Urubu Progress Union, including top Urubu men, including those you like and dislike, are all members of the Midwest movement. So I think if there is a way, I, we will actually need someone who will be the John the Baptist, who will be our touch bearer, who will take this to the very center of Uruboland. Whether you are Ugeli, whether you are from Sikulu, whether you are Kouye, whether you are Agbaro, Ekrakra, anywhere, whether you are Wengo, Barakokori, whether you are Ukbe, whether you are wherever, whether you are DJ, some we need the strong in the Bini side, by the grace of God, we've been able to, in a way, put together a lot of them. Like I can even see some of them here, and I can see indigenous Bini, indigenous people of Bini, Great Bini Kingdom, of Seredo, of Bahaido. Same thing with the essence. With the likes of Dominic Eriata and Co have been able to make us push into those places. When the Midwest summit was held in Asaba, the largest, the only people that brought their traditional rulers, your robots. Because whether we like it or not, it might not be nice or not, the robots are pivotal to the successful prosecution 
of the Midwest idea, of the Midwest agenda. Thank you so much, Dr. Basaki. I, I, I really wish we had or we have all the time to really um, take um, everybody's uh, question, but we still have so much to, to go through. I see so many hands and so many questions are being typed as we speak. So very quickly, I want to ask uh, Apostle Steve, Oscar, if you could um, ask your question, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening, uh, my uh, Ebo, the elder state, Madam Pedro. God bless you. And uh, good evening to all the elders and everybody in the Midwest state, uh, all the chief and everybody that's here, the coordinator. I just want to say good evening. And uh, my question, uh, just two short question. Uh, the question was that uh, during the Lord Lugard, they said Nigeria, they amalgamated Nigeria, the South and the North in 1914 and expired after 100 years. It was a 100 years contract and it has expired. Then this thing can be taken to the United Nations and say we are no more part of Nigeria because me, I'm not praying for Nigeria again. I don't want to be a Nigeria. That is my own stand. Me, I don't want to be part of it. This thing has got to my neck whereby our family are not safe anywhere. So that's my first question. How do we deal with that? Nigeria has expired. Then number two question. Um, a lot of us in diaspora want to support the Midwest, uh, this movement. But we don't have where we account or how we can support because without money, nothing works in this world. As long as this world is as my two questions. Bless you, sir. All right. Um, you. Quickly, I'll just use another uh, analogy. In the 1990s, Yugoslavia broke, and everybody knew about the fight in Macedonia, the fight in Bosnia and Herzegovina, the fight in Serbia, Croatia. But nobody talked about Slovenia. Slovenia was actually the most European of all the countries in Yugoslavia and they did not fight and I keep saying that if the Nigerian nation decides to disintegrate today and IPOP announces their country Ududuwa declares the Nigerian army of 323,000 total force army navy air force together cannot stop anything they have not been able to beat Boko Haram a ragtag army of semi-illiterates since October 2010 when the first bombed Abuja that is on the one hand. So if it comes, to push comes to show, Edo and Delta people, we go alone. And the United Nations will recognize us because the paradigms are on our side, because the instruments to do that are available. The things that make nationhood are already been prepared back end. Because why we are not putting them online, but I think it's time to do that now. It's because we didn't want the, the Nigerian nation running after Pedro or running after Titi or running after Loretta or running after Mary or running after the Piazza. That is on the one hand. Number two, on the level of finance, it was also a major thing in the last um, Zoom conference of this nature. I deliberately relax because who one contribute will contribute. The Midwest movement is a duly registered bona fide organization in Nigeria, known as the Edo Delta Indigenous People's Welfare Association, with bank accounts. If they are asked for, now, why we don't want to be publicizing it on the, like, this social media? I don't know which of now for here now, when they work for DSS, I will be frank. So we're not going to publicize them for here. We have put in place checks and balances to be able, all our activities have been funded by us. When I say by us, not by me, all the members who are here, they know they contribute for us to be able to do this, raise big boards and stuff. What we need is not small, small money that we will use to take the buy knockout. In case push comes to shove, we will go buy gone. In case push comes to shove, we have to be able to divide what we've done in the Midwest movement, Midwest developmental agenda and the security network, where we broke the entire Edo and Delta state into village units. That is the only way we can build all this up. So maybe the organizers, maybe um, uh, Ted, maybe Olorogun Ted and Reverend, Reverend uh, uh, Augustine Como, who already have a wide followership as the as one of the lead pastors of the of the of the Church of God Mission, who will be able to come up with how do we get in the door, track the door, how do we make sure by the Osega do there's a group called the Osega do for example in Benin where they use Bitcoin to raise money so that the federal government of Nigeria will not block certain accounts. All those things are key, but I don't think these are the things I should be, I should be um, raising yes. on public fora, forum. Yeah. Doctor, forum doctor like you, this. you don't yes. need to raise all that. We know how we'll go about it. And yeah. we will we'll model Midwest from Israel. 
Israel has only recently been created. I don't know if many of you know when Israel was yes, created. Yes, 1947. God bless you. Yes. Now, the diaspora of Israel, where the brain, where the bone, where the flesh behind the creation of Israel. Of, of I mean, Israel. the modern Israel, you know. Yes. yes. So we know what... Yeah, the, the, state, the state of Israel. Yes, the state of Israel. We know what uh, we can do and we know how to market it. You don't need to divulge any information in, in this meeting. We shall, okay. we shall do it uh, in a special way. Pastor, come on. Next uh, hand, please. Next question. Wait for Lo to unmute himself or ask his question. Uh, oh, Fred, okay. and Fred Akoma, if you're there, please. Um, unmute yourself ahead. and ask the unmute question. Unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Fred Akoma. Okay. Fred Akoma is not Next person, next person, please. I'm responding. I'm here. Okay, okay. okay. Good evening, everybody. I live in Germany, so I'm a member of Osegeto also, and Dr. Pedro is my senior brother. He might not know me, but we have been in, touch, in contact for some time now. So my question is, I don't want us to fail because I'm afraid the way Biafra failed since all these years, they are unable to get what they want. Why can't we include the Benin Empire before the, before the invasion of the British, of the Benin Kingdom? As is stated in the map from then till now, that is my question. Um, I, I want to be a realist. I don't want to be an idealist. See, I know the map you are talking about is the map of the scramble for partition of Africa, where they drew the Unique Kingdom to end somewhere in Oba, Obia, and part of it ending somewhere close to Lagos. You see, why I feel or I believe that that might have been overtaken by time is as we go, because as at 1897, they did not even refer to Nana of Shekiri as Nana of Shekiri. They referred to him as Nana of the Bini River. It was Bini, 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 Bini. The hope is was Bini. But we have to take into consideration the concrete realities on ground. As a little boy going to school in the very early 70s, when we get to Owara, it wasn't called Owara. It was called Adani Siebe, Junction of Shipping, Kulanot. But I don't think I would call the man in Owara, in Owara, in Owara today for him to agree to that. We, as a boy growing up, where Okwe people, we are distant, very distant. Many people don't realize that Okwe people don't even speak Urobo. So I believe that the, since they are engaging documents, documents that are citable, presentable, are not based on, on fallacies or based on oral tradition, and that is the documents of 1952, the document of 1957, and the document of the plebiscite of 1963. Those documents clearly delineate a clear geographical expanse and the peoples who populate them within that geographical expanse. If not, you will have to include the people of Degema. Today, uh, this morning, the crown prince of a place called Obia, Oba, in Egbema clan, in the in um, local government area of River State, sent me the funeral announcement of their king, and they did it in Benin. But I know that would be a little far-fetched. That would be more emotional than it is um, empirical. So empirically, on based on documents we can present to the UN, based on documents we can present to the, the UK parliament, to the US Congress, there should be those documents signed by the leaders of the Robo Nation, signed by Siak Bere, signed by Jereto Mariri, signed by Datin Asemota, signed by, by, by Shaka Momo, signed by Tony Inaru, signed by Chief Atropressed. Those are the documents, and those documents clearly delineate the present Edo and Delta, yes. with a few areas now in Ondo, the, uh, uh, the Akotubu area, the areas of northern part of Bayesa, up from Sagbama down to the Non River, and the areas of Undoni, which originally was the Undokwa in the in the Undokwa, when it's Undokwa, it didn't mean anything, it is Undoni and Ukwani. But that Undoni now is where Peter Odili is from, who went to school on the Midwest Scholarship and only become a member of River State in 1989 when Obangida uh, retaliated, when we cut the boundaries. Those are the things we should think of. Let's stick, I'll pray that we stick to documents that we can defend and documents that are reliable and persons who we can easily identify within the commonality that we should share. Thank you so much. Uh, 
uh, Dr. Baseki. Um, I think, um, I believe that's the question was answered, my brother, uh, Koma. Low, is it low? L O U R O. L, -L O U, I beg your pardon. You raised your uh, hand. It's just, just a short form of uh, Lois. My name is Lois. Okay. Lois yes, Sangbedo. No worries. Could you ask your question, please? Your hand is raised. Your hand was raised earlier. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to thank everybody here for coming out. Um, and for a very, very long time, I have had this feeling of just being really homeless. I live in the UK. And, and um, you know, growing up, I actually lived in uh, Don Pedro's, Dr. Dr. Don Pedro's uh, dad's house, but he wouldn't know. Um, but they used to be our neighbors. And um, you've mentioned a lot of things, the historical context, uh, the legal framework, and, and all of that. I think it should be based on, on a core strategy that, you know, that encapsulates everything, you know, from social media to marketing, to, to getting the, the hearts of people, both educated and non-educated, and also um, to be able to communicate that because, you know, I just heard of this last two days ago. And, you know, if Nigeria is going to disintegrate, then we shouldn't be a secret. You know, many of the things that we are doing, it's not even bad. You know, it's not treasonous. You know, I know Nigerian government likes to behave the way they behave, but there should be a proper core strategy. You know, there are similar organizations like, like UPU. Um, they need to come on board. And there has to be a core strategy. And I would like to help. Um, you, with, with this, with all of this, and uh, I need to know how people like me can tap into it. Fantastic. So, thank you. Can I ask a simple question, please? Yes, please Lewis, go, ahead. go ahead. Um, can you drop your email and maybe phone number to me or to the organizers? It's because we also have okay, to know what the, co what, what the core competencies are. Yeah, Louis, Louis, every... just type in your email address, Louis, in yes. the chat box. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Okay, thank well you done. very much. Well done. Okay, let me take the next question very quickly. Edwin, uh, Edwin, Edwin Igwe, Igwe, please, if you are there, could you ask your question, please? Edwin, all right? Next I one. say that most, most times I've been raised because we need to quickly move swiftly. So if I call you and you don't answer, I'm the next one. Oriahi, Oriahi, Aigbosu Rume. Sorry for my pronunciation. Oh, no. oh Okiria. Okiria, yes. Okiria. Yeah, that is the, that is the okay. former head, right, of, right. head of AIT. All right, um, Thank you very much. Uh, always a pleasure to be here. I, my, my name is Ohiria Agbonsu Remi. I am currently uh, diaspora in Canada. Uh, I, I, but not really, I'm in Nigeria. But uh, for some time, almost a year, I'm in Canada. Uh, I've been in touch with uh, Obaseki uh, Pedro. We work together in AIT uh, since uh, uh, this uh, organization uh, came on board. Now, I want to very, I want to, my mind is just partly question and contribution. The question of Nigeria restructuring, disintegrating, or whatever you want to call it, uh, be, being a better Nigeria with good confederation or with scatter, it's not, a, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So it's not the question for debate as to whether it is coming, it's going to come. It's just when will it come. So it, it is the strategy, like the last speaker said, that I'm also interested in. I'm interested in getting the leadership right. When I say leadership, I'm talking about by the buy-in of the key uh, segments of the of the uh, uh, do data people, everybody, the twelve uh, tribes, getting everybody on board to know what is coming ahead, and that is why the strategy should not just be uh, the the politics of the moment. Now, if we begin to look at who is going to support, who is not going to support, and we use the yardstick of the current political rulers to measure what we are doing, we will fail, because that's why we have to ingeniously develop like we said we cannot begin to trade on some of these uh these 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 tactics that are up we have a very wicked system very very wicked system that if we do not take care they will infiltrate and disorganize you so what we, what we need to do if you if 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 i get the picture correctly is to work behind the scene get the strategies right begin to mobilize our people and get things done so that we are not caught on our ways. I think what Don Pedro is doing and the, the great supporters that are building this wall around is to be sure that we are not caught on our ways. We are not swallowed up by the Eurobars who say they have put a ruler to us, we are part of them. And our brothers in the, in the, in, in the South, uh, who are close to the Southeast, are not told that, look, this, because their name is Sokar for their Igbos. So these are the kind of things we should begin to look at. And if you ask me, I also want to ask, somebody has asked the question before, but I want Don Pedro to also 
uh, go into it in a deeper way. I'm here in Canada. I want to know the exact uh, template that is on ground to suck in those who are outside. Look, so many of us are tired. I just, I'm almost 60. I'm tired. I don't even want to come. I don't even want to get to that place because for one year, I couldn't go to Ogwa, my, 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 my town in, in this island from Abuja. So what, why do I need to stay in Nigeria? So we need to begin to look at the strategy. Some of us out here are ready to do one or two things that is possible to help galvanize the diaspora because like somebody said, the Israelis are more diaspora than in Israel. The strategy of being operated at home in Israel is done from outside. So we need to begin to look at how do we gather ourselves together? How do we get the, those in diaspora to understand and buy into these features? Thank you very much, sir. I think that does not uh, require my response. You, you, yeah. just, you just said what we should do. Yes, I think uh, you have even spoken and, so much about yes. it. And uh, But thank you very much, Ohiria, for, for raising and reminding us that we need to come together. We need, yes. yes, we need to come together. So we're going to create awareness. Uh, we have one, one uh, enthusiast, uh, uh, Lou is very enthusiastic about uh, being a part of that, uh, that team that would throw it out. The more, you see, if you tell a, a lie a hundred times in a day, people will believe that that lie is true. So if you know that this is truth and you tell it a hundred times, you, you can imagine what, what we can achieve. A lie, if you tell a lie a hundred times in a day, the person, the hundred person who we hear will think it's true. So we, we, we have the truth. We know the truth. We have Dr. Basaki who is there. He has done his research. He knows his onions about Bendel, Midwest. I'm very proud of, uh, of my origin. I'm, I'm an Urobo, but we come from the Edo's. I'm from Olomu in Uruboland. And the people who formed Olomu came from Benin City, from Benin. So I'm, I'm proud to go back home. Anyway, that's by the by. Um, we have Jerry Obaseki. Is Jerry Obaseki there? Can you ask your questions? Please, we'll take only two more questions because we promised to end this by 8 o'clock. Dr. Dr. Baseki is also human. He has been talking now for two hours. So uh, we'll take a question from Jerry and one more, and then we can close this meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, love is a brother. Uh, my dear big cousin. Hey, hi, hi, Sacramento. We're doing very well, sir. We're fine, sir. Yeah, my name is Jerry Obaseki. I'm connecting all the way from Sacramento, California. Um, I'm the grandson of the former Isama of Benin. Um, my question is, um, I was currently in a room yesterday in Clubhouse, and um, it was about Biafra, and there was this claim to the south-south um, region, which um, encroaches into our Midwest um, region, and, and they actually put, brought out a map or a series of maps to back their claim. My question is, how do we, what is the strategy to tackle that um, when it arises in the future? Because it's going to keep uh, coming up. And um, do we have any plan on making sure we have a good sensi uh, um, sensitization um, um, campaign to, to, to educate our people and let them know where exactly our geographical um, location covers? Thank you. I'll just quickly, um, first and foremost, we, as they are putting up their maps, we are putting up our maps. It's going to be tit for tat. Number two, there must be a continuous, unstoppable media blitz. The Igbos are not online, except when it comes to Biafra. But we are online for everything. So when we make this a collective, deliberate publicity blitz, I think we will go in. In, in fact, in the last time, IPO people came and confronted me inside the Ben TV studios in London, barring the place for me to step out. But I realized that we can do this. The, we've all been talking since about the strategy. So what I think we might do immediately is to put in, in, in the public domain some of the things that we've done. And then some of us, like Louis, who is also media, we develop a deliberate social media plan. We have one we've done, but we've not activated fully. We will activate Radio Bendel and share the links as much as possible. We will do videos and create our own TV if possible. Territories that they claim, we will prove to them why they can't claim it. And if Biafra, it may be not, it will be nice for us to know. Let me quickly, I just want to divert it. 3,600 square kilometers is the size 
with which Edo and Delta together is bigger than the entire five states of India. Imo, Anambra, Enugu, Ebonyan, and Anabia State is 3,600 square kilometers less than Edo and Delta. Number two, we must realize that the Biafra that they are talking about, the last two capitals of Biafra were Calabar and Umaya. We must realize that the first capital of the eastern part of Nigeria was Calabar. And we must know that General Philip F. Young from Ikota Abasi was the deputy president of Biafra. So when you tell me a Benin man or an Urubu boy, really boy, that I be south south, I know inside of my mind that when Jonathan was born, good luck, he was born a citizen of the eastern region of Nigeria. We are the Midwest. And once we keep, once we know who we are, a club gathering of Igbos, no matter how loud they may be, we'll be able to tell them the peculiar historicity by drawing on, histo on histographs to prove it. We are the Bendel peoples. We are not Igbos. Number two, this one is the last thing on this very one week. Those maps they draw, we must, why not challenging their right to self-determination? They have a right to self-determination. We must push that whatever they do, they must leave us alone because we are not part of them. And the more we push our own videos, our own stories, like we are what the media movement now is working on a 13 episode series on the creation of the Midwest as a shareable item on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook, so that we will see what was written, what was said, how Nigeria used to be until the, until the, the dismantling of history or the canceling of history from our books by Abacha in, 19, in 1997, the teaching of history. So we we'll use that to challenge their narrative so that they will understand that we know who we are and they cannot colonize us or try and recolonize us or swallow us. We'll be born. We will hook their neck. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Obaseki, for your answers. Um, like I was said earlier on, time is of the essence, and I'm so much sorry that we might not be able to take all hands that are raised. Uh, but I want to I want to just ask, um, I want to slightly uh, break the rule a little bit and maybe just give uh, everyone, I think I say one, two, three, four hands, if you promise me that you will get straight to your question and just make it brief, don't go into any history of anything, just ask your question and um, you will get your answer as well, as brief as possible. Um, I want to ask uh, Ambassador, uh, is it Joe? Is it Joe? Oh, Joe. Yes, is it here? Joe. Yes, I, see, I saw his hand raised a minute yeah, ago. Thank you. Okay, Thank you very please. much. For, uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I'm calling from the United Kingdom. And I want to appreciate uh, the convenience of this uh, meeting tonight. Um, what I just want to quickly flag up, because so much, so much has been said over time, and I, I kind of believe it's time to activate most of the things that have been propounded over the years since the formation of Midwest Movement. Uh, credence must be given to Dr. Don Pedro for his tenacity and all that he's doing. The questions have been asked. Where is the hierarchy of Midwest movement? Because it seems to be the only one doing stuff. One, where is the hierarchy, if there is any? Two, in terms of membership drive, it's time for us to put formation structures in place. We can approach it uh, continentally, okay? That probably will make it easier. Have designated uh, constituted bodies or a team that can function and spread this whole news, uh, the, the, the agenda of the Midwest movement, wherever they are. Because all of what we're saying now, even if we have not metamorphosed into a political structure, it's something to do with numbers. And I know our people, the Midwesterners, the Bendelites, the Edo Deltans, we are a lover of our place, our heritage. Many are, they are very desirous. They are willing. Many are asking questions, how to partake, participate in this movement. So we need to get our horns, our, our pipes, we need to get all of them out and sound it and, and launch out how people can be part of Midwest movement. We talked about fundraising earlier on. This is not secret society. If we are an organization, 
uh, incorporated already and we have the right to fundraise, crowdfund or whatever, the information should be made available for people to participate in it. When we have these, you know, um, these bodies constituted across continents to drive the agenda of Midwest movement, then people will know that they need to contribute because without funding, as someone has said earlier on, we can do nothing, okay? And we must find a way to harmonize our unity as a people, as Midwesterners. Everybody seems to be doing their own thing. But if we come together and, and launch our agenda, trust me, people will key and buy into it. It is only a matter of time and how much effort we, we, we put into that information dissemination. So that is what I just want to chip in. Where's the hierarchy of this? Who's doing what? Aside Dr. Don Pedro, and then how we can reach out and get designated places across continents of the world, championing and echoing the agenda of the Midwest movement in terms of how we can engage our people and we can increase the membership of Midwest movement. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, yes, Dr. Pedro. Okay, I'll, I'll just quickly answer that. Um, quickly, um, like I said earlier today, uh, when I started, we just opened a, a, a big office in Benin with staff to be able to engage the grassroots. As for the membership of the Midwest movement, of which uh, the man who asked the question just now, you've been a member since um, 2017, I guess, and uh, you also um, helped put together Midwest movement Europe and Midwest movement UK. Um, as it stands today, we are about 259. But that doesn't mean everybody is functional to the same degree. In terms of the organogrammic structure, we have a board of trustees. We have an interim management committee. Where it's just that I'm, as I said at the beginning, I'm the face. There are people who are older than me. And uh, we also have a Midwest professors forum. We also have a Midwest lawyers forum. We also have a Midwest liberation movement, which is like the, the in case the beginning should come. You know, those are in place. But in terms of empowering everybody, or in terms of raising funds, I'm not saying that we are not a secret society. It is a registered movement. It is a registered, it's a bona fide, registered organization. But I'm just saying that based on people who, that's why they are putting phone numbers there. If we put this online in the public domain, we've seen what has happened to some of these movements in Nigeria. Tomorrow morning, the federal government of Nigeria, we are talking here, they are monitoring the federal government of Nigeria will just slam that account. And I also mentioned that people are using alternative means. I mentioned what is happening in Sogedo, for example, to raise funds via new monetary instruments like Bitcoins and other uh, uh, financial instruments. This forum might not serve the purpose of being able to break it down nitty gritty. But once we have a mailing list, we can now begin to push like a global uh, uh, Araki said earlier, we can now begin to know those who are actually with us. Uh, who should be plenty? You know, not be able to say our father, our father, and I You know, so I am saying, I'm not without disparaging anybody. I am, you know, what it is when you have a movement of 200 and something people we are talking, and then you are invited to the DSS, and the DSS shows you a full sheet, 17, 18 pages of the entire chat, of the entire chat. So if you, as a member of the Midwest movement, if you notice in the last few months, I don't talk every day again like before, because they may not they may know where to arrest you since you did London, but they know where they go arrest me in Nigeria. So they will not arrest me for the thing that Ambassador Joe said, or arrest me for the things that Olorogu Ted said, you know, because we are on the platform. But we will, as much as possible, if we cannot outspend them, we should outthink them, outshout them and make them realize that our people cannot be used as cannon folder. And I think today, it is, this is a great thing for me because I am just trying to go that my video is not up. I am, I am, I am, I'm cheerfully happy that we've got in here. You know, like one of our members keep telling me, Okay, same as if we've um, we've lost. No, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. It is I'm well. Here. It is well. It, it's here. just a bit emotional. Okay, it's all right. Thank you so much, Doctor. We appreciate you. All right, all right. Let me take um our sister Joyce. Your hands. Uh, you raised your hand. Please, could you ask your question if you're still there, Joyce? 
Hi, I'm still here. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I just want to uh, say thank you to Dr. Pedro because uh, he has been doing a lot of uh, work. And it was uh, because of uh, the way he speaks, uh, you know, very passionately, eloquently, and uh, sometimes emotional, you know, that was what drew me to um, attend this um, 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 platform or this uh, occasion today. But one thing I want to say, we've been talking, you know, okay, but I think we can also use these people on uh, social media, social media influencers that are in different uh, uh, countries. They also have huge um, followers and they are also loud. So they can, you know, we can use these people very much to get to the grassroots uh, uh, people. And uh, secondly, I want to say that um, here is all about men, 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 men. But again, we still have some women that are brilliant, that are uh, political as well, that uh, we can also reach. We have some women platform, which we can also you know, bring them in. They are very, very um, um, vital or important to this cause because it's a cause for everybody. Um, then again, about the finance, we have to also be... Um, you know, have to also um, stay focused on that because uh, nothing is done without uh, money. And I also want to thank the other guy. I think he's new, you know, because they are younger generation. So there are some of them are very good with this computer. So we can do a lot. So we can shout all we want. We can shout very loud because these uh, iPod uh, people, they are doing this. We don't want to join. We are not joining anybody. We have to stay on our lane. And I believe if we put ourselves together, we can do, um, we can do this. You know, so that's what I have to contribute. But I have to also take consideration uh, about the women uh, folks. Please, it's not only uh, about the men here. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Joyce, thank you very much, my sister. Uh, the Middle East Movement is a very gender-sensitive organization. And um, I'm happy I'm seeing Afusat here. I'm seeing Dr. Loretta here. I'm seeing Mary here. Uh, Mary in Denmark and Loretta in, in Sheffield are members of the Board of Trustees of the Middle East Movement. And then the way the Board of Trustees is different from the IMC or Internal Management Committee is done is that there is a representative from each of the senatorial zones. And there are six senatorial zones, three in Edo, three in Delta. And out of those six senatorial zones, two have women representatives on the Board of Trustees of the US movement. And in terms of being able to go loud, I think uh, what you're referring to just now are the social media influencers. Um, I think people like Louis Lo, uh, Lo and Co uh, understand that. And then um, once we get started now, as we are going from there now, we could also engage a few of them, even on the professional level, who already have, whether it's Bista Blog Ninja and, uh, and all the others, we can leverage on them. And then we can also do online uh, uh, bar advertising, and just like iPod is doing. And based on that, based on who, are, who is on our Twitter handle, we can actually hashtag and use the hashtags, selective hashtags, to push the, 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 the Midwest narrative. Uh, I thank you very much, Ma. But as for the women, no fear. We, uh, we are very capable. We should, they, are like the, they are like the policemen of the Midwest movement. Thank you so uh, much, uh, Dr. Obaseki. I uh, see so many hands have been asked that we need to round up. Please, I, I did appeal that we will stretch this till uh, about 8.30. So I would please ask of you to just ask your question straight and we would also plead that uh, Dr. Baseke just give us a quick uh, answer to that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also want to point out very quickly before I call on uh, uh, Dr. Chasomoro Jun to ask his question uh, or uh, say whatever he wants to say. Um, I'm sure that we have uh, representatives or representations from different parts of the world in Nigeria and in the diaspora, whether it be in the US or uh, Canada or in the UK. I would like to appeal that, you know, we, we find a way to identify who these people are so that at least those people in those regions can liaise with them and then we can begin to see how we can uh, synergize and put things together from our different um, zones to uh, come together. That's just a, a suggestion that I want to make um, in the time. Uh, Dr. Omaro John, please, over to you. Please, could you unmute yourself? We're not hearing you. Dr. Omaro John, unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. sorry. With all protocol observe, I want to commend uh, the organizers of this meeting and Dr. Pedro Baseki. Uh, for his steadfastness. I was in a similar meeting yesterday of the Odua group, and they set out to raise $40 million within six months. And they are not joking about it. All this we're talking about involves money. My proposal here is I move that we set up a Midwest Liberation Fund 
and start to work on it straight away. Because without money, whether you're going to be having social media influencers and so on and so forth, these people need to be paid. I know Dr. Pedro and his team have been working on a horse string uh, funding or budget, but we need to take this very seriously. Without money, we can't do anything. We need to have a resolution today to commit to raising funds as part of the resolution from this meeting, so that at least we know we have one deliverable, one achievable objective. That is my brief contribution. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate that. And I think that that's very, very apt. Um, you know, the, the Bible says, uh, permit me to delve into that, that uh, money is a defense and money answers all things. Um, and so I strongly, strongly um, subscribe to that. We need to begin to see how we can, you know, uh, pump up our funding uh, to achieve our goals. You, but you. Let me take... Let me take a uh, brother Obaru Odu, please. Okay. Brother, brother Obaru Odu, please ask okay. a question. And you stand by, Sam. Sam, do it digitally and I'll call you. Brother Obaru Odu, please, if you're there, could you unmute yourself and ask your question? Thank you very much for taking, giving me the opportunity to speak here. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Pedro for all the work you're doing and all the organizers of the uh, meeting and the movement in itself. Now, I'm an Isuku man, and as an Isuku man, we are minorities of minorities, no matter how you slice and dice it. But we are never silent. And I like what is going on, but I just want to know who are the representatives of Isukos who are already on board, who are the leaders, whether they're at home or abroad uh, on this movement. Personally, I am the President General of the Soko Sindas who are here in North America. And this is the first time I'm hearing about this movement. And so I would just like to know because by all means, we would like to get involved. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, quickly, the, in the formation stages of the Midwest movement, it was agreed that the vice chairman or the vice president general of the Midwest movement must be an Isoko man. <laughs> so the, the vice chairman of the Midwest movement. Yes, I can hear you. The number, the number two person in the Midwest movement is, is an, an Isoko man. Uh, number two in the IMC, um, we have two Isokos. We have barrister Efimena Mena Ajakbovi. He is, and at the same time, the deputy head of the media committee and former uh, uh, executive director of that communication news bureau. Um, uh, Felix Akuga. Felix Akuga. Felix Felix Akuga. Felix Akuga. Felix Akuga. Felix Akuga. Yes. Okay. Yes. So Felix is in the is in the central committee. Same thing with Gary Bire, and same thing with Mena Ajakovi. Menan Jacob is one of Nigeria's rising uh, high-profile uh, lawyers, and I think he's on the executive committee of the Nigerian Bar Association. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, just, to, just to quickly add to that, because the brother that asked... And, uh, uh, and Austin that is talking now, he lost the <laughs> convoy. <laughs> so, um, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, um, the brother that I was talking, I think is, is based in the States. So if we have somebody uh, within the hierarchy of this movement, that is um, in the States. I think we can link him up with, uh, with our brother so that mm -hmm. from the diaspora um, angle, they can um, begin to do things as well. Uh, so uh, Dr. Obaseki, if there's anyone in that region that, um, you know, I know uh, Dr. Loretta is with me here in the UK and if you're that- Loretta is also in Soko. Okay, yes. we will, we'll find a way to, we'll find a way to, to hook up. Uh, this is not about, uh, primarily, I mean, this is, we, we, we have a collective interest and that should be what drives us here. Uh, so I will be linking up with those in my zone. I see Dr. Ogenede, uh, but Ogenede here is shortly between Nigeria and uh, here. Uh, okay. But those of us in the UK or, or Europe, we'll find a way to uh, come to uh, some sort of um, a center point where we can all uh, put our forces together. I think that's very, very important. So, Dr. Obaseki, if there's a way you can link this brother or because he did say he's in, he has a, 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 a large uh, followership of people as the yes. uh, man in charge of uh, the Isokos in the diaspora, I yes. think that uh, his role will be very, very useful mm. for this. Um, so, if you can link him up with whoever is in charge I, 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 of the uh, I've already uh, I've sent him a direct message. Fantastic. Very good. Very Fantastic. good. Okay. Very so, good. let me quickly take um, uh, indigenous people 
Um, I can't see the full name, but you know. Indigenous uh, people of uh, okay. yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, the indigenous people of United Kingdom. Okay. Of Guinea. All right. Could yeah. You I want, yeah. I want to first thank uh, Dr. Pedro for his uh, hard working. Yeah, man, I'm not like asking questions. I just want to talk about the spirit that is guiding all of us, which is the spirit of Benin. Uh, a brother once said in this uh, okay, uh, in this uh, Zoom meeting that uh, some of us, our spirit is lost uh, because, uh, you know, we are answering some names that uh, that is not driving our spirit. So I'm using this opportunity to tell everybody one that we are in support of Midwestern region. Uh, if Nigeria decided to go back to regional government, but if Nigeria decided to go their separate way, we, the Benin, stand with the name Benin. Because Benin has been there and he will continue to be there. Uh, Benin is a spiritual name that has bound, bound all of us together. The Kweri people are saying today they are Benin. Even the Wike came out and said he's Benin. The Oba of Lagos came out and said he's Benin. So there is a spirit that is uh, behind it. So I will want all of us to continue to support our Midwestern movement. And in case that our brothers that is in the left and in the right are saying they are beneath, we, the beneath, we will not hesitate to stretch our hands to them. So that is my contribution. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you. On the level of the Midwest lawyers, that one is key. In fact, we have to stand down a motion to sue the Nigerian government early, uh, middle of last year, because we wanted to declare the Nigerian constitution null and void as a way of bringing attention to us. And the Midwest lawyers is... Uh, a committee of 14, led by uh, uh, Abeni uh, O. Mohammed, who is from Esako, who is from uh, Ora, senior, senior advocate of Nigeria, with the deputy as a uh, barrister Menar Jakovi. The others are still here. Frank Titi is here. Afusa, uh, Afusa Bamiele is here. Uh, Enna Ofugara, who is in the US, just a lawyer. Um, Ogaga Ifowodu, uh, Raf Urigo, uh, Richard Mufegamijo, and Roxini Giligi. We are all put together as the Legal, the Midwest Legal Committee to, to handle things like, like this. You see, we have to be still. S T E A L T H. I truly believe that um, uh, Gragraphite and Gragraphor, now they follow each other. We do not have their strength in numbers, but from what we are saying now, we are not the one initiating a dismembering of the Nigerian nation, but it, our position now is a concomitant effect of that imminent dismembering. And as a result of that, everything that has been done by Odua, I repeat, Peter, we have done. The only difference is that ours is not in cyberspace, and the time to put it there is now. Uh, Oga Theodore is aware of that. That is, Oga Theodore is aware of that. Uh, Dr. Loretta is aware of that. Uh, Mary is aware of that. So those things are available. So what we've done is replicate saying, when they decided to create the dawn Agenda. Don means developmental agenda for Western Nigeria. We also decided to do that, taking into pe the peculiarities of our zone. And that is the document I've already shared. If you check your chat and go to where I've, the chat, uh, this is, I've shared the PDF file. I've shared it to everybody. Because unless it is to everybody, you might, so that you will find comfort in the fact that, okay, things have been done. But to be able to actualize them, which I call ASD, you know, actualization of self defense or action to self defense, we must imbibe some of these things. So that we we'll begin to see the narrative from our history to where we are, what we need to do, how we need to do it, and how we need to organize our people, whether we see a better Nigeria and whether that better Nigeria does not suffice, we must be alone. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I see that uh, our brother Sam has been raising his hand, uh, but I don't think he knows what to do. Permit me to say that. Uh, we were asking that you, re you request by um, digitally raising your hand, but we'll take your, your, your views now, if you could. Can you ask him to unmute his mic, please? Yes, or please unmute, unmute your mic. mic. Can you unmute, unmute his your mic, mic and ask your questions, sir, or your contributions? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Sam. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. I'm from, uh, we I'm from Bini, from uh, uh, Oriol local government. Okay, I'm very uh, happy to, he to hear everybody taking just like this. Uh, a few things that I want to say. For what I know, uh, Dr. Pedro, what I have from you today is just so I don't know how to say it. I have to praise you. Uh, for another few insights that I would like to put to add to it is that few things that we need to do. That means oh, if, if we have to break 
let's say if the, the situation did not work out, we need to form uh, uh, what is called to design the what is the ex expected income, the expected uh, uh, the expected initial capital. That means the airport to build an international airport in Benin to have an army, a defense. How much would that money be? Then to whatever the infrastructure, the initial infrastructure, infrastructure what would be the cost? So that should be one. What that should be done? What would be the initial cost if we if we decide if they decide to go in part and we want to go in our own? What will what will be the initial capital that okay. will be needed? Okay, Mr. Sam, we, we, we get the message, Doctor. Can you quick uh, quickly just no? Answer him? The, there's another question. There's another question. Second question is that we should please go ahead and get to the the list of all the people from Bende State that have traveled out of Nigeria in the last 50 years. That means con contacting either the Nigeria Embassy or contacting all the Niger uh, all the foreign, all the, the, all the two, okay, uh, okay. 92 countries okay, to get Mr. the list Sam, of yes, all the get, Bende lives. Okay, we'll get the second question. Dr. Baseki, please. Yes, uh, quickly, I want to just tell um, uh, Sam that um, as we so speak, as we are here now, um, we, we, we have, I don't want to start talking about that one, all the retired generals from our side, all that are alive, are in a committee, and they designed the security network. They don't use the word security network, but it's actually a self-defense mechanism. I have shared it to you already. I've shared you the frontal. What I mean frontal, that is the, uh, not the other breakdowns. That is there. Number two, in terms of the diaspora, you see, sometime in 2002, my uncle... His name is Kinua Obaseki. He lives in the United States. He has sent me the document where the, there was the Bender Initiative Committee of BIC, where they, they totally, I will maybe I'm going to he sent it to me today. I am going to present it to the, to the, to the, to the movement so that we will, we will distill from it how to properly engage the diaspora and the messaging, because the messaging is key. This, is a, this one is a five-page document on how we can navigate the international community and be able to put in the fore what will take the Bender peoples to the front of the, of the queue in this narrative. Yes. This is, this is key, is key, you know? So, and I pray that at the end of this, I think um, um, uh, Reverend Como, uh, Como is, is recording. If this thing can be put out later. Don't worry, we, 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 Dr. Basaki, we, we are dealing with that. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, we can now take a question from Henry Obovu. Did I pronounce that right? Henry yes. Obovu, please. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And uh, I want to... Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, yeah, we can hear you. you loud and okay, I want to appreciate the conveners of this uh, gathering. And I'm very happy that there are lots of people in the UK that are present here who are very, very hands-on, that can do a very good job here. My main contribution will be on the financial side of things because a movement like this is quite big and uh, it will need huge finances. And such finance cannot just only be monitored in Nigeria. We that are in diaspora should, especially in the UK here, should form a kind of a body where there can be an account where donations or contribution could be sent to. And from there, we can be feeding the Nigeria um, structure financially and also raising money and uh, another thing i wanted to just say is that uh, dr obaseki has done so much but there is one aspect of it which he is saying that we are waiting for the fight to come then we will decide on our own future which is very good but i can tell you judging from the last civil war in nigeria we know that the midwestern region was the area where the Biafrans and the Federal Republic of Nigeria had the, the major fight where they are trying to, the Biafra were coming to win us, especially the Robos, Why the, the Federal Republic Army were trying to take over the, the region. So we should not just think that it's going to be an easy thing for us to just say, oh, they are splitting up Nigeria. We will just not stay on our own. No, there must be a fight. If you don't understand this, we must know that we have to prepare ourselves for that eventuality. So with all this, financial involvement is very, very important. We should set up a shadow financial strategy side by side with the one that we have in Nigeria. So if we cannot send money to Nigeria, we can use the money we have here because they are going to be safer here, like yeah. in the UK. 
that is my contribution. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Henry you. Obogu. Uh, we yeah. appreciate that. There are models already on how to, to raise money. Uh, we, will, we will follow. I always mention Israel because they are, they are very shrewd, very, you know, they know how to do these things. Uh, another thing we should get into is donating to particular charities. So we could raise a charity under the Midwest umbrella. And when you hear that name and people are raising funds for them, please, by all means, put funds there. You know, there are ways to do it. We'll come up with a blueprint that we would all accept. Thank you very I, I much, Mr. Henry. Yeah, I will contact a few of you so that I can make some contribution towards fantastic. how to structure fantastic. that financial side of things. Fantastic, things. fantastic. Uh, doctor, do you have any contribution? I, I know we don't no, no, no. We'll be talking I'm, I'm, for three I'm hours. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. Okay. But uh, there's a man here, there's a man here, a video about how he's been... Yes, 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 I know, the, uh, the gay, about... I, I think it will be the last question I'm going to take. I just saw another hand being raised because... No, 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 it's the last, please. Uh, so, uh, well, talk, talking about contact, may I um, suggest, if that is okay by Dr. Loretta, that uh, for those of us in the UK, you can uh, just send her a direct message of your maybe your number, so that at least she yes. can um, she can reach out to you. Just send not, not only general uh, messaging, but just send her a direct message of your contact number, and I'm sure that she will be in touch with you. Is that okay, Dr. Loretta? You give me a thumbs up. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so that's good. And, and, and by the way, we all all the contributors tonight, their records are all in our chat. It's been it's recorded. So everyone who has contributed, uh, uh, visually, audio and text, it's all recorded. By the way. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, let's take uh, Brother Obaho uh, to give us his uh, contributions or his questions. Let's take uh, Obaho, if he's still there. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm speaking from Canada, Ontario. And I, I, I want to thank uh, my brother, Don. When uh, the Midwest time of Midwest, when this is started, I recall my sister Loretta and Don himself, I think I was put in a, a diaspora committee of Midwest Time Movement. Yeah. Uh, the biggest room in life is a room for improvement. We just keep tweaking, tweaking. But I want us to look back and tell ourselves that we are not just going into a battle to fight. We must have what I call followership. Followership in the sense that we should be able, if we don't have it right now, create student chapter, youth wing, because this fight is, <laughs> we've started the fight, it will not end today. We don't know how long it will take. I just want to suggest that. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. We appreciate your um, contribution. I'm in total I, um, okay, Dr. Obaseki, did you want to say something? Or? No, I said I'm in total agreement. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, the salient points, they are all in video, they have been recorded. And we'll highlight them. Say, for instance, finance, how we plan to finance. Uh, someone like Louis, I'm very interested in Louis. It sounds very, very uh, articulate and someone we can rely on. So people like that, they are all in the, the world being the video. And we are going to circulate this video to everyone. Uh, I think at this point, if you permit me to uh, move a motion for an adjournment of this meeting, can I please ask for somebody to move on a, a, a motion for adjournment. Any hands up? Louis, no? I move a motion for adjournment. Please. Okay, okay. And Thank Louis support. supports it. Fantastic. And uh, can we ask uh, the pastor who prayed the, uh, when we started? He's a lawyer, by the way. He's one of our lawyers in the background. He's very, very uh, animated about our movement. As a matter of fact, we're in a private group, a private Midwest people's movement group. Uh, he said the prayers earlier. Can he just close... Uh, this meeting for us, please. Where's uh, Pastor Omari Joseph or Barrister Omari Joseph? Let's just uh, bow our heads and pray and thank God for a um, successful meeting that we've had today. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we Amen. want to thank you for the privilege. We want to thank you for the opportunity. We want to thank you for the energy and the strength you're giving to Dr. Pedro to lead and to deliver such an exquisite um, a deliberation to answer all the various questions. We want to thank you for all the participants from all over the world, from the United States, from Europe, from the UK, where we are. We want to thank you, Lord. Uh, those who have traveled, uh, we want to ask for journey message back. We want to pray, Lord, that whenever we come back again, we'll have many more people than what we have today. We have people in their hundreds and maybe in their thousands. And Father, Lord, we pray for this um, Midwest uh, 
uh, movement. Uh, where, where I, 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 I was called to this movement when I heard um, Dr. Basaki speak about this this movement. It touched my heart, especially the part that. Uh, we're being infiltrated from both sides of our, uh, uh, our region, from the Yorubas and from the Igbos. Uh, uh, Father Lord, uh, I, I was a coward. I ran away from that call. And you touched my heart again. I came back so many times, and now I'm here. I'm here to stay. And I pray that many more people who are afraid or people who are not interested will pick up that courage and join in and contribute our quotas so that whenever what happens in Nigeria happens, the Midwest region will be able to stand on its own. Father Lord, I pray for Dr. Basaki as he as he he's the front man that you give him um, people who will be supportive, people who he can share some of this uh, heavy burden that he's carrying with, and uh, you continue to protect him from the DSS or Nigerian Security Services. We pray, Lord, that uh, the next stage of this um, movement will be greater than where we started from. I ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Once again, thank you so Amen. much for taking the time to join. We sincerely do appreciate. Uh, we want to assure you that um, what has taken place tonight is not just going to be um, kept aside. We would keep on this momentum and we'll keep you abreast. Uh, we're going to link up with all the various uh, sections uh, wherever we are across the globe to synergize and really you know, do what we've said we're going to do as a way forward. So once again, thank you very much for taking the time to join this call. We sincerely appreciate you and God bless you richly. Yes, let's turn off the meeting. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, doctor, we'll see you later. Yeah, everyone. All right. yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.